I needed to do a couple more things for him to help him to get him over the hump. And uh, we just didn't have enough. You know, as the coach, that's your job to get him over the top. Give him something. Give him something extra. And we didn't give him enough to get him over the top. Well, I'm not going to argue with him. Hey, sports fans. Coach Nick here. Welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. We went through the final two and a half minutes of the Kentucky-UConn game. And I got to tell you, Coach Calipari let his team down big time. He missed so many things, and the way they ended up playing gave them no chance to win this thing down the stretch. And I'm going to show you what I found. And what's frustrating is that he can't have it both ways. He can't hide behind the fact that they're all freshmen who are just new and inexperienced and then not support them by making great coaching decisions in the final game of the year like that. Terrible stuff, very frustrating, and I'm going to show you why. The first issue I had was this. While the 2-3 zone helped to get Kentucky back in the game earlier, Calipari then asked his young, inexperienced players to play a defense they had not practiced all year in the most crucial, pressurized moments of the NCAA title game. Of course they're out of position, the guards are standing flat-footed, Randall is completely out of position way too high, and they allow Napier a clear view of Daniels and all the time he needs to lob it up and allow UConn what became a crucial layup. Down by six, there is still time, but running something to get a good shot is critical. So they run one completely ineffective pin down where the big doesn't even try to set the screen, but then they do the smart thing by hitting Randall in the pinch post. Of note, he's on the left side of the floor. If I were coaching, I'd get him on the right elbow so he could drive to the middle with his left hand. This became crucial because his footwork was awkward as he tried to shoot across his body and missed the short shot. Their usual over-reliance on getting the offensive rebound doesn't come through as Daniels tips it out and UConn grabs it. Now it's time to start being aware of time and possessions since UConn can take up to around 30 seconds on each possession if Kentucky doesn't do something about it. Also incredibly important is that Kentucky only has five fouls, two away from being in position to force a one and one from the free throw line. However, if you're going to allow a team to take 34 seconds off the clock, you damn well better take care of business on the defensive rebound. Poitras never knew where his man was when the shot went up, and it's an easy rebound. At this point, with a foul to give, the smart thing would be to try and trap very aggressively, not worrying about a foul. Maybe you get away with it and get a steal and cut the lead. Instead, they allow UConn to take time off. But what doesn't make sense to me is if they're going to let them run time, why is Harrison guarding the ball 40 feet from the basket? Of course he gets beat. Poitras foolishly helps from one pass away, but they dodge a huge bullet as they give up a wide open three. This was one of the only crunch time possessions that looked right. They need a quick attack for a two, and Napier is way out of position with the ball two passes away, allowing Young an easy curl and a good finish at the basket. But wait, here's their chance with four timeouts to stop the ball. Get your team organized and put on a press. But does Cal Perry even think about it? Nope. His assistant finally realizes it and signals to call timeout, but by the time it even occurs to Calipari, the ball is already in bounds. So now Kentucky's bench is scratching their heads for another 10 seconds before deciding to take the foul. Again, they could have been ultra aggressive to get a steal first, so this is just a red hot mess. First off on the inbounds, the refs missed Napier switching his pivot foot. From a clock perspective, Kentucky needs more possessions, not less, yet they allow them to take another 24 seconds before the worst play of the game. You can see Young stare at the bench. They must have been signaling something about the ball since he just runs at the guy, allowing a simple pass down low and forcing the Kentucky to commit the one type of foul you can't have in this situation, a shooting foul for two free throws. Remember, this is a young, inexperienced team, so why wouldn't Calipari call a timeout to help them? Set up a quick two and then foul again. Extend the game to give them a chance. Instead, Randall misses his ball screen, allowing the defense to really harass the ball handler, basically ending the game because it directly leads to this contested long three. The luck runs out for them on this miss, and now there's no way for them to extend the game. And I also don't like that they didn't finish the game by fouling. They gave up five seconds early. 
This reflects more on the coach than anybody else. We couldn't foul late. I know everybody's, why don't you foul? Because they're not missing. Those two guards never miss. Our best chance was two possession games, stop them, make a basket, timeout, you know, try to steal. That was our best chance. So that was his rationale for not fouling, which I think is a little bit ludicrous because guys who do not miss tend to miss a little bit when you get into the pressure pack situation of a finals game. You got to find out. Actually, the more they make in a row, the more likely they are to miss. So you have to follow. You have to extend the game and have more possessions. And then he talks about getting a steal or whatever. Where was that? He never pressured the ball to try and get a steal. None of this stuff actually came true the way he describes it. Yet in the media, he's allowed to make it seem like he thought of these things when he didn't. Very frustrating. For more perspective on how the final 140 seconds played out, you can look at it like a football game. UConn was able to hold the ball for 114 seconds out of that 140, with UConn using five possessions to Kentucky's two. In a game where you have more talented athletes, you want more possessions, not less. And yet Kentucky allowed UConn to run the clock out. So there you have it, sports fans. Some problematic stuff from the coaching side. And the other problem I have with him that I've talked about a lot on Twitter is that he recruits his players to get into the NBA. Come to Kentucky, we'll get you in the first round, we'll be happy after one and done. Well, he doesn't prepare them for the NBA. None of these players are coming out of Kentucky understanding a five-man concept of playing within a team framework. They might be extremely talented, very athletically gifted, have individual skills, but have no idea how to play in the concept of a team framework. And I believe there is time, even in one year of college, to learn more than what they're learning coming out. And I think it's his job to do that if he's going to recruit that way. Most college coaches don't recruit that way, so I would say it's not their job, and their job is to win. But if Calipari is going to recruit promising first-round NBA draft choices, then he better darn well prepare them for that. Well, thanks for joining us. Lots more coming up on B-Ball Breakdown. And don't forget, we're not a channel. We're a conversation. You win.